G'day champions, let me introduce you to my 1989 Lodestar box top. Isn't she beautiful? Now I've already gone and thrown a coat of paint onto here and I've also gone about rewiring the entire trailer. New lights, new cables, I put a new plug on and the local Australian wildlife is already taking up residence there. Now I've also gone and put a new set of tyres on this trailer and these are the foundations, the building blocks for this project. Let's now I picked up sheets. this form ply, very cheap off Somewhere Facebook magical. Marketplace, and the first red flag probably should have come when I arrived at the address and it was a seafood distribution warehouse. Should have been the first red flag, obviously wasn't. I grabbed six sheets and I came to realise quickly why it was so cheap. It wasn't the best quality, but it's what I had and I was going to make it work. I needed to start off with one sketchy cut here just to get the first panel down to size. Quite a difficult cut to make on your own on the table saw. Now I need to open up the trailer and remove some of the hardware that I have already got installed. This includes a 138 amp hour battery, a 1500 watt inverter and some very basic housing that I have put in the trailer for previous camping trips. Okay. Once I had all of those out, I could remove the rubber matting that was on the floor of the trailer and go about checking my rough measurements in the hopes that they were right because I had already made the cuts. Well, I guess it's time to see if my rough measurements even come close to fitting these sheets of plywood into this trailer. Now I could continue on building the housing that the drawers would eventually go into. This was quite a repetitive process. There was a lot of cutting the same sizes in order to build this frame. Just taking a closer look at these cuts, you can see we've got a really clean cut on the top of the cut. But when we move over and check out the bottom, you can see that there is a lot of tear out there. This is due to a number of factors mainly because I'm not using the right blade for this job. A higher tooth count blade will do a much better job on this plastic melamine sort of surface than a 24 tooth rip cut blade will. But unfortunately, my 84 tooth cross cut blades are not sharpened yet. So I went ahead and did this cut with the rip cut blade. I'll just do my best to try and hide that chip out along the way. A new tool here that I was having to play with, the Masca M1 pocket hole system. Getting everything set up because I had a hell of a lot of pocket holes to drill for this project. Note to self, avoid cheap screws. Well, that was a bit shit. That screw just tore straight off. That's gonna cause us some problems. So I did that one. Literally just sheared straight off, driving that in. That's not, um, not great. Now, if you don't know how pocket hole systems work, I'm not sure what rock you've been hiding under, but it's a pretty repetitive task and it involves drilling a lot of holes on an angle to make joinery nice and simple. Now, pocket holes are absolutely awesome for these sort of applications where you are building boxes, be that cabinets, drawers, anything of those sorts. This pocket hole clamp from Craig was an absolute lifesaver on this project to hold these panels up straight while I drove the screws home. Once I had the first side panel installed, I went about doing the exact same thing on the other side and getting that installed before I could move on to the center support and get that installed as well. Now I can slide the top into place and it was at this point that I was thinking, this is pretty big. I'm not sure how I'm gonna maneuver this by myself. But I kept driving screws and I figured I'd cross that bridge when I got to it. 
I wasn't able to access the pocket holes on the inside to attach the top, so I decided to drill down straight from the top and sink those screw heads below the surface so they wouldn't interfere with anything. Now I could cut up a back panel for the box because I knew exactly what the dimensions were going to be. And that allowed a perfect fit straight off the bat. I drove those screws straight in. I didn't use pocket holes here because you are never going to see this panel. It's purely there to make sure nothing falls out of the drawers into a spot that I can never reach. All right, so that's the box complete that's gonna house the drawers. Now I'm gonna try and wrestle this myself into the trailer and hope that I can lift it. Once that's in the trailer, it's gonna clear up a bit of workspace in here so that we can get onto building the actual drawers. And then I've got a few little bits and pieces that I wanna add on top of this box that we've made to make things a little bit more functional when camping as well. This box is really big and awkward size, so this is gonna be difficult. Before I even had a workshop, I screwed three cheap casters onto this cable roll and it has been the most handy tool I've ever had. I use that thing as a seat, I use it to maneuver heavy things around, it has been a lifesaver. Now it's time to start construction on the physical drawers. Because I had the box formed, I knew exactly what size I could make my drawers now to maximize capacity. So I just opened up my table saw because the dust extraction didn't seem too good and pulled out about a kilo of resin shavings. So it always pays to clean out your dust extraction. Should follow my own advice more often, I think. A quick check to make sure that my theory of having no draw runners on these drawers will work. I've been hoping this entire time that the black coating on the form ply will allow a zero friction slide so that I can really capitalize on as much draw space as possible. When you use draw runners, you lose quite a bit of space on the sides and I didn't want that. I also thought that if I did run into any sort of friction, I could apply a paste wax to the form ply and that would sort everything out. Here we are again, making drawers, drilling pocket holes. These two, they pretty much go hand in hand at this point. And as you can see, I've got six names listed up on screen right now, and these guys are absolute legends. I want to give a shout out to all of you, Scott, Cindy, Dave, Mike, Mike, and John. Thank you guys very much for the support over on Patreon. I really do appreciate it. I probably should have done some speed ramping at this point. Well, if you didn't know what pocket holes were before, I'm sure by the end of this video, you will be an expert at what they are and how they work. I slid this back panel in for support more than anything. I used an off cut because I didn't want to cut off a full new sheet and that's why it wasn't the full height of the drawer. I needed to cut some drawer faces, so that's what you see me doing here. If you're not confident making a cut like this, please don't, but I felt very safe and confident making this cut. I use some F-clamps to hold the draw faces on to get a rough idea that they're in the right spot before driving in some screws from the back to hold everything in place nice and strong. Now, as you can see, we're missing handles and they're pretty important here. So I went about finding the center of each drawer Marking that and then realizing I don't really have a jigsaw or any other good way to cut this out So I tried to force in a bit, but it was far too blunt So I went about using a normal drill bit and drilling what felt like a million holes to act as a jigsaw in some sort of sense I guess hog out most of the material and then I came back with the thinnest saw that I had to slip into those holes that I'd already drilled to cut out the remaining waste this is not the purpose of a flush cut saw at all, just so you know. I then used a file to refine the shape just enough so that my hardware would fit in nice and snug. I 
picked up a large fridge slide so that I could attach that to the top of the drawer box to allow easy access to my camping fridge. One of the biggest headaches so far is not being able to pull the fridge in and out and having to climb into the trailer to access it. This will alleviate that problem completely. The fridge fits straight on the slide just like that and then it's easily accessible. You can slide it straight out, get what you want out of the fridge and slide it back in. Now it's time to load up these drawers. after the mandatory blast because they're full of sawdust. In goes the two camping beds, the camping couch, some lights, a spare pump. The drawers were starting to get heavy at this point so I had to slide them in a little bit, follow that with my tarp and my tent and a few other bits and pieces. This drawer filled up pretty quickly. The weight certainly made a difference when moving the drawer in and out, but the friction was not that bad. On this side I went about organising my camp kitchen as well as some chairs. Then I put this divider in place to try and reduce the amount that things in this drawer would move around as it wasn't as packed as the first drawer. As you can see here, they still slide fine. Look, it's probably not the, uh, the intended use of the Viking arms, but uh, trailer stabilisers while you're working in there. They're doing a great job. Right, so I've mounted the battery in the back corner which is going to be behind the fridge and then run electrical cable all the way around the very edge of the box up to the inverter. I'm going to glue this panel on here and that way I don't have to spend any extra money buying another panel and this, this thing does everything I need it to do. It's what I use for travelling turner. It's got the Anderson plug, it's got some cigarette lighters over there, uh, some cigarette sockets, cigarette lighter sockets I mean over there does everything I need. Inverter's got a plug there which I just run a power board out of. Just waiting for the glue gun to warm up and I'm just going to hot glue that in place. I didn't want to show you any of that in the video because I don't really know what I'm doing. So if you know of a wicked auto electric channel or you know just an electrics channel in general where I can learn all about electrics and how it runs because it's just one thing I don't really I can't really get my head around it. I've got the basics but um, yeah this is the basics. It's not pretty but it's gonna work. Now I have future plans to bring a barbecue along on this trip and I needed somewhere to store the gas bottle. So I thought I would use the front of the trailer, I would put a toolbox on there and the guys in caravans do it so why can't I do it on a trailer? I'm going to store my 9 kilo gas bottle in this front toolbox. My theory here was the toolbox will save this gas bottle from any sort of stone chips or damage it might occur from being attached to the front of a trailer. So it should be nice and safe in there. And it's also going to allow me a little bit of extra room on the other side of the toolbox to carry my water storage containers. I grabbed this bracket off eBay, three screws later, that bottle's nice and secure. front end support on the trailer because I need to now move the jockey wheel and I'm going to use these Viking arms. Now small disclaimer this is really not what they're made for but I think they're going to do an awesome job supporting the ball weight of the trailer which is definitely less than this can handle but um, yeah it's going to hold it up while I have a chance to unscrew the jockey wheel mount and move it over to the other side. So the reason I need to move the jockey wheel is because this toolbox now interferes with the raising and lowering of the jockey wheel. But what I didn't consider is the bracket that holds the jockey wheel on. That also has to be unscrewed to get the jockey wheel off and unfortunately that too is hitting the toolbox. So I'm going to try and remove the entire assembly as one through a couple of bolts on the side and then relocate it over to this side closer to the front of the trailer. Does the job pretty well. This whole procedure went surprisingly smoothly. I was expecting some hiccups as usual, but it's got to be one of the first times that something actually went completely to plan.
Well, it's not pretty, but it'll do the job. Quick touch up with black paint and you would never know that that wasn't original. Right, it's time to flip this trailer right the way around. I'm finished working on the front now. I gotta do some more work in the actual back. After sliding these drawers in and out using the chrome handles, I decided that I needed some stronger handles. Pulling it by this latch was not the best solution. So I picked up these handles. They attached on very easily, two screws, and they are extremely sturdy. So I was quite happy with these. Seeing as we all like to camp in the shade, I bought a 12 meter extension for my solar panels that runs all the way in here to charge up the battery, which is back there. But I'm a bit worried that I've run that battery too flat because I've got it hooked into solar at the moment. It's only reading 12.9 volts. I'm hoping I leave it connected for the rest of today. It'll charge back up and we'll be good to go. Now this is something I've wanted to do to this trailer since the day I bought it. I've never liked this closing, securing, locking mechanism. So it brought me a lot of joy to finally be able to cut this off, grind it back, and then install some very easy to use latches to hold this door closed. How much simpler is that? Some fine adjustment to get the right amount of pressure to hold the door and you're ready to go. Again, quick squirt of black paint to cover up those screw heads and you wouldn't even know they weren't original. Alright, so for continuity purposes, I feel obligated to let you guys know that since I finished working in the last clip and started filming this clip, I have upgraded my workbench. It is now more than double the size that it was and as such, the trailer no longer fits fully in the workshop. I know someone would be bound to point that out, so I'm going to jump on it before the curve hits. So I've got one more modification to do to this trailer before it's ready to take it out on its maiden voyage. And that is to install this thing on top of the drawers. This weird bit of plastic is actually the top of a Ziggy triple grill trolley. Try saying that three times fast. Ziggy triple grill trolley. Triple, uh, triple grill tr triple grill trolley. Anyway, I had this grand idea of buying a barbecue a few months ago and I wanted something that I could barbecue at home with but was also semi-portable so that we could take it camping because the camping cookers are just about cactus. Enter the Ziggy Triple Grill. There is enough space on it to cook a meal at home and it's portable enough to take camping. One of the features I like about the trolley that I bought is it has four quick release pins that you can simply pull and release the grill straight from the trolley. So one night I just sort of thought if I could put the trolley top into the trailer, I wouldn't have to strap down the barbecue. I could just use these quick release pins to hold it in place. And then I sort of thought a piece like that is gonna be expensive, surely. I think the trolley's worth about 200 Australian dollars. Maybe a little bit less, I'm not exactly sure. Anyway, I scoured the internet and what I found was I could buy this part straight from the supplier for $25. The only downside was I had to wait six weeks for it to arrive. So that sort of trickles back to my original statement about why my workbench has changed. It has been six weeks since I filmed that last clip to what you're seeing now. And because it has been six weeks, we are also right in the middle of Australia's summer. So I don't really want to go camping in this insane heat. It's bad enough in the workshop. But I'm gonna get this plate installed. I'm gonna see if the barbecue will lock in as easily as I hope that it will. And then we'll figure out the camping thing down the track. So these are the quick release locking pins I'm talking about. That is how easy it is to lock your barbecue into the base. Then all you gotta do is pull that, twist it, and you're free to lift it up and out of the base. Obviously the base isn't secured right now, but it's just for demonstration purposes. And if we remove the barbecue, you can see there's even some hot plate storage under there. So everything will be nice and secure while traveling. Now, I just gotta make it fit. That looks like it might just work. Not the most convenient location to put it. Down the back, I was hoping to position it right here at the front, but it's just not gonna fit. Between these two, the knobs and the handle protrude slightly as well, so that would interfere with the inverter and the fridge. In hindsight now, I kind of wish that I'd moved the inverter to the right-hand side of the trailer instead of leaving it where it was, instead of leaving it where it is. 
I guess both are correct. But I've already run all the cabling for the battery around the back of the drawers and I don't really want to mess with that now. But if I'd moved all of that to the right hand side above the fridge, I'd probably have a lot more freedom on the left hand side to make things work. I mean, it's not like it's multiple times a day that I'm going to have to be crawling in and out to get the barbecue in and out. So that's probably a positive. The barbecue will stay out when we're camping. I should be able to deal with just crawling in there to pull it out every trip. If I can't, maybe I'll change it down the track. Let's check actually that we can still get all of our boxes in here as well before I commit to, uh, to screwing that down. They're full of gear, that'll fit in there. I think it's gonna work. I think it's gonna work. Only other thing is to check this ginormous solar panel. will still go in as well. You need that to slide down the side. Right about there. Now, I picked up a couple of three ton jack stands as well, and these are collapsible so that I can fold them down and store them in the drawers when they're not in use. They're really easy to operate. Just open up the legs. You can lift up the top here, put the locking pin through, and you're good to go. I've got one of these for each side of the trailer. Then I'm gonna use the jockey wheel at the front to apply some leverage to hold it stable. Well, champions, that concludes this modification journey for this six x four trailer. I purchased this thing about six years ago to get all of my gear across the Nullarbor back from WA to Alice Springs. And that journey never ended up happening. So it's just been sat in my front yard. I've used it occasionally, but more recently in the last few years, I started filling it up and taking it camping. But with the work we've just gone through, it's gonna do that a hell of a lot better. I'm sure after a few trips, there'll probably be some more changes that I wanna make to this. And chances are, I'll make those smaller changes in some short form content that you'll see on YouTube Shorts and TikTok. So if you're not subscribed to my other social media platforms, make sure you check the description below, follow the link and get subscribed over there. And Speaking about subscriptions, if you've made it this far through the video and you aren't subscribed yet, please click that subscribe button down below and don't forget to click this bell icon. That is what's gonna let you know when I drop new videos. Until next time guys, stay safe, look after yourself and I will see you soon.